This is Jimi Hendrick, and this is episode 40. Um, no, no, this is a special episode. 1971 on LDS Hasten. Picture this, okay? It's back in 1971. It was only a year old then. Coke and Pepsi sold for 15 cents. Around my circle of family and friends at the time, Cadillac was a car to drive, and Dick Nixon was president. I didn't grow up in a church, but picture this. It's general conference time. Which, I'm, I'm doing this because general conference is approaching within a few weeks, right? And so, situated in the living room. Mom and dad, kids. Ready to feel the Holy Ghost from church leaders. Can imagine me there. Maybe it's as uh, maybe it's an older son, you know. Just got out of college, living with my parents to save money and my own business and everything. Then nothing could compare or take me quite as high. Is being watching the conference in the uh, tabernacle. And hearing the, the tender testimonies of church leaders, you know, giving honor to God and His one true church. You can feel the Spirit. I mean, I don't know what it is right now. and It's, it's in the dead of night right now. But as I'm speaking this, you can feel the Spirit. I hope you are tuned to, to, to the Holy Ghost, because this is important. You know that you're sitting there, and you are receiving revelation from a mouthpiece of the Lord. Now... I remember my first year in the church, I would tell that to members of my family, and they would say, James, you're crazy. You're crazy. But then again, why not? We know in the Bible, Peter, James, and John, the quorum of the twelve, were receiving revelation from the church. Now I know that that's far-fetched for some people, but face it, if it can happen in Bible times, who can say that it can't happen in modern times. Okay? Why don't you think about this? Boy K. Packer, Dallin H. Oaks, no, um, Boyd K. Packer, Franklin D. Richards, Ezra Tapp Benson, Gordon B. Hinckley. These people were, at that time, were, peace, were speaking peace to body, mind, and spirit, okay? Well, it's, it's say at the same time period, one of my favorite uh, TV shows growing up, you know, back in the 70s, was, was the Pretty Bunch. 
held the nation, you know, kind of captive on TV. It's easy to see why. But even better, the power of those men in the priesthood can set that the, the captives free. You know, I was listening to a Point of View radio talk show host. And they were talking about how, you know, Christian men who did not have a father. Did not even know how to be a father. To be a leader in the family. Okay? Let's, let's walk and talk. I have my answer to that. Okay? I didn't. Before I joined the church. I would hear ministers in the in the pulpit and friends like uh, Brad and, and Julie, you know, their names were changed. They would they would tell me that the man is supposed to be the spiritual leader of the home. But I really felt like Without the priesthood, how can you do that? Because the good thing about the restoration of the gospel is the priesthood's there. Okay? Let's go back to that conference. October 1971. Once again, nothing can compare and nothing would take me quite as high. It's sitting there and listening to those leaders and the in the tabernacle testified pouring out their hearts peaceful revelation for us at, at that time speaking peace to us you know friends in the church and everything being able to st helping us to be able to stay on the covenant path and being close to the Lord and free from sin uh, from sin Because of my covenant relationship with Jesus Christ, I have what's known in, in, as, as my sacred box. It has certain mementos like uh, my baptismal uh, certificate, my certificate of being ordained to the Aaronic Priesthood, um, the handkerchief from the Lubbock Texas Temple uh, dedication. Okay, so, so now listen to me. Listen to me. I know it's kind of hard for you to think or fathom or realize, but we, we need to pray to Heavenly Father that He and His Son Jesus Christ can keep us strong. Keep us on the covenant path. Holding on to the iron rod Passing on the iron rod to those behind us, you know, that we, and ahead of us, so that we can be called faithful. Isn't that what we want? Here's something, though. The prophet back at that time was, as far as I know, was Joseph Fielding Smith. You listen to some of these men of God, and they tell you, they give you the testimony. I believe in in God the Father. I believe that God the Father is. I believe in Jesus Christ, His His only begotten Son, and in His and in His infinite atonement. I believe the Bible and the Book of Mormon to be the Word of God. I believe the Prophet Joseph Smith to be a prophet of God and we have a living prophet of God gives us guidance on how to live out our sacred saving ordinances and to stay in touch with the promptings of the Holy Ghost it's 
funny. Acid reflux has been keeping me up tonight, but compared to how I was earlier, with some uh, contention and everything, I just want to give some gratitude. I'm glad that my Lord Jesus Christ has chosen me to be a work in progress for for uh, salvation. All this would not be possible if it, if it had not been for Jesus Christ. We know that. We know that from the Grand Council in Heaven before we came here. So be grateful for his salvation. I hope you've enjoyed listening to um, LDS Hayson. If you like what you hear, please subscribe and become a part of the LDS Hayson family. This is Jimi Hendrix saying, until next time, until next time, remember who you are. Read your scriptures. And by all means, please, preach the gospel. God bless you.